Steph wanted to come to you guys and just have a talk. Before we kind of get into the topic of today's chit chat, um, I kind of wanted to just reiterate that Alicia and I started this channel to promote positivity. Yep. Um, we're all about um, positive things, you know, encouraging people, um, making them feel better, um, and just positive things in the world. And it really makes us sad and, you know, very heartbroken whenever we, whenever we see things going on um, that aren't just um, things that aren't positive, things that are very, very nasty um, and ignorant. Yeah. And that's how we decided to make this video, which is going to be about um, just what's going on as far as, you know, racial tension with the different instances that have been going on um, and just media bias, kind of like how we've been feeling about everything that has been occurring. Yeah, okay, so Kyra and I found ourselves yesterday in the kitchen just cooking dinner and we came on a topic about the, you know, the most recent issue, which is the whole McKinney issue, the school party issue. Yeah. yeah, and if you guys may not know, McKinney is pretty much in Dallas, Texas, which is where we live, so it's pretty close to home. Right. And we just feel some kind of way about everything that took place. Um, of course, we found out about this when everybody else did on Sunday. And it was just, okay, for me personally, it kind of like, okay, so the other situation that happened, you know, with Michael Brown, um, Walter Scott, and things like that have been happening. That's Pretty hit, great. Yeah. It's just, all this stuff happened as well. And that's, it has hit me close to my heart with each of those instances right. because, you know, we have dads, we, you know, we all have brothers and, and you know, and it just, I guess the fact that it could happen to pretty much any of us is what really, just really hurts me. Right. And I guess for me, um, this particular instance with the whole McKinney pool party is issue, I guess it, it really, really, really bothered me because these are kids. Like, it's right. not just, you know, grown men, it's, these are kids. Right. And they were just having fun, you know, kicking it at a pool party. Yeah, you know, they may or may not have lived at the, you know, at the particular residence, but it's, I mean, it's a pool party. If, if, if at least one of them lived there, like, they were all invited to the pool party as, you know, as, a, as the end of a party type, as the end of school party type of thing. So, I guess it just really hit home to where it's like, it could have been any kid, like it could have been my little cousins, like it could have been anybody just kicking it at a pool party and this happened. And sorry guys. And I guess it is really bothersome because I guess the thing that really, really irks my nerves is when people say, oh, they shouldn't have been there. Oh, the cops told me yeah. they should have left. And yes, I agree that they should have left. Like, you know, people tell them to leave, go ahead and leave. Like, don't be disrespectful. But at the same time, they did not warrant for the cops to have taken it that far. Like, that's my biggest issue. See, see, my my biggest issue, aside from, you know, the kids being told to leave and yeah. all of that, my biggest issue with the entire incident is how that particular cop single-handedly pointed out all of the African-American children and skipped over all of the Caucasian children. Now, if you watch the video, you can see, you know, the cop yelling and cursing mm -hmm. and, you know, telling them to get on the ground and all, all, you know, all this, all of these very, very demeaning activities. But the cop literally goes over, over and skips all of the white kids and specifically targets all of the black kids. Now, the kids <laughs> should or should not have been there, you know. And maybe they weren't listening and things like that. But at the end of the day, these are teenagers. I mean, yeah. that's what they like, do. Like, think about what you were doing when you were a teenager. Like, okay, you may or may not should have been at a place <laughs> that you should have been at. But, I mean, they're kids. Like, they're not going to listen. I mean, let's be real. And, yeah, okay, the cops told me to leave. And I actually, I watched on um, Facebook yesterday, I watched a, um, a video of a African-American male telling to, telling to the news, news uh, anchor, Telling them about how, you know, with the video, the video didn't show the kids that they were being told to leave. Pretty much justifying the fact that the cops should have done what he did. And my, my problem there is the fact that, okay, yes, the, the kids were wrong and they shouldn't have had no defense. They shouldn't have been there, blah, blah. Okay, that's, okay, that's a whole different topic. The problem is the, the police brutality. Like, that's the whole issue here. People justifying the cops' actions and saying that they're protecting the people. Blah, and not even, blah, like, and not even with this one. And not even just with this issue. It's it's one of those things where it's happening over, over and, and over, over and, and over, over again. again. And it's getting to a point to where, you know, at what point is enough enough? Like, 
Alicia and I were talking yesterday in the kitchen and we were saying, you know, this, this past weekend's issue at McKinney, at the McKinney pool is really just like, it's like, what are we showing our kids and what are we showing, yeah. you know, African Americans in this country? Because, you know, with this particular incident, it's, it's saying even going to a pool, a pool party after school, you can end up in a dangerous situation. Exactly. And not only that, but these are white kids and black kids just hanging out, trying mm -hmm. to have fun and enjoy them in the school year. What they were doing and all that stuff like that, that, that's irrelevant. You just have a bunch of teenagers trying to have fun. And the fact that you have these kids here who are just going to a party just to have fun and end up in this predicament yeah. where you have a girl bring, being dragged onto the floor by her braids and, a, and, a, and two and, and two boys who are trying to come to the girl's rescue and then they have, 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 have a cop like have a cop like gun on them. Crazy. And people are still justifying their actions like saying, I, oh, the cop, you know, is protecting the people. Oh, like these, these kids are clearly unarmed. They're clearly not dangerous. Clearly. Like, and the, clearly. Fact, yeah. and the fact that the cop felt the need that he had to do all of that to, you know, to detain these kids. Like, it's so, it's so ridiculous. Like, did you really need to drag this girl on the ground, throw her, the, your your emotions are are obviously way too high. Like, let's be real here. Your, your emotions are way right. too high. You, like, I feel like as a police officer, you're supposed to know how to co uh, control to police, your, control, how, how your emotions. How to control situations without having to go to the next level. So back to what I was saying earlier about the lessons that we're teaching our kids, it's you have on one hand you have A, it's it's do you go to the aid of someone who is clearly being treated unfairly exactly. and is having unjust things happen to them and then risk yourself getting put in a bad situation. Clearly, for example, with the you know the guys who are the, the, the young boys who are going to go aid the girl and they got a gun pulled on them, do you do that or do you just sit back and walk away and turn a blind eye? Because at this point the police are showing our children and showing our community that we want you guys not pay attention. We, we, we don't want you guys to care. Mm -hmm. So tying back to situations with Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown and Freddie Gray and Eric Garner. Eric Garner, you have all of these protesters who are trying to promote change and trying exactly. to walk for something. But then here you go, they're getting tear gas, they're getting beat, they're mm -hmm. getting all these things. It's like the police are saying, don't pay attention. Don't, just don't care. Just, yeah. Just walk away. Because if you do do something to try to change it, then you're in trouble too. Then you're in trouble. It's like, it's like, where you, it's where like the balance. balance. It's like, what? I think, I, I, think the, I think the hardest thing is that people don't understand why we are so angry. And granted, you know, God is a God of love. And we, and we, we are definitely promoters of exactly. love. Exactly. But at the end of the day, you have to see why we're so, so angry. angry. And it's like people are so blind. Like it, it, it is, it, it, it I don't want to say it annoys me, but it is really it's like, so, it's so like frustrating. Here. Whenever like I'll on social media and you can clearly see the divide between the people who really like at least understand why we are so angry. And then people who just keep justifying and justifying and justifying these cops actions where it's like, where do you draw the line? Like, do you, like, it, does it have to be your family or your family member that has to go through it for you to understand it? Because <sighs> I find, I, 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 I essentially believe that some, some people won't get it until it's, until, until it happens to them. them. Which in real, in reality, in reality it will never be them. Won't, it, it will never, a lot of, a lot of Caucasian people, and I'm gonna be real, will never have this, will never it. understand it. They'll never have to have the conversation with their son and say, look son or daughter you know these things may happen you have and to this be what careful you do whenever this, this happens what you should do whenever a cop approaches you and those things will not happen to most people in america except african americans and it's so it's so mind-boggling that people do not understand it. there there are people who legitimately think racism does, does not, not exist. exist and that is and, it, and I think the thing about it is we are like we are you know we're not anti because like, you know we we love all people so yeah that's a whole different topic like we're not trying to promote that at all but our whole thing is just I wish people would just wake up and just see what's right in front of them like if we could just if we could just all get on one accord like if I feel like okay I feel like if if like, this situation was opposite like for a Caucasian um Caucasian person I feel like.
like African Americans would completely understand like what's going on with them because we have to endure, endure that ourselves. Right. But the fact that they are not they, but other people just don't really understand our side of it, and they probably will never will. It's just so mind boggling to me. Like it is, it really hurts me. And the fact that on the way back to Dallas the other day, Cortez and I were just talking about like. The kind of conversation we would have with our kids like once we once we actually have children right. because we have to actually sit down with our sons and our daughters and tell them okay this is what you have about to do the world whenever yeah about the world we live in about what you have to do whenever a cop comes to you and approaches you like what you cannot do what you you know you can't you can't say anything clearly can't say anything to them because this is what was going to happen like there's two instances where there have been dangerous situations with cops so you have to teach them you know this is what you do, this is what you don't do. Like, it's crazy that we can't talk about that now. Like, we don't even have kids yet, we can't talk right. about that now. And I think another thing with the whole McKinney Pool situation that also frustrates me, um, tying back to what Alicia says about, you know, just different situations and there's different people in their situation and experiences, is the fact that during this situation, you have grown adults in their 30s, 40s, 50s that are standing around yes and are okay with it and not only are they okay with it there was one guy in the video who prevented other kids from going to the aid from which, going to the aid of the of, of, of the young girl who's on the ground which that why was he even able to do that like i i really it was just it, oh my gosh y'all it bothered me so bad because the cops are literally just letting this man who just a random person like sit there and pretty much like prevent all the kids from helping them out and pretty much like stopping them from pretty much like doing their job. Like if the kids if the kids want to go into the girl and help her, like they aren't trying to attack the cops. They weren't trying to do anything like that. They just want to help the girl so she can be okay. And this guy is just literally just standing there, like like blocking them and like, and dude, away. It's yeah. like not it, not you cannot watch that video and think that everything was okay with that okay. video. There there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing right about that video but then he's and the fact that there are adults that are sitting around and are letting this happen it's like what if that was your child but the thing that these people don't understand is that that will almost never be their child so they don't understand yeah and it's so frustrating because it's like what else can we do to show the world that this is a real issue, issue? like is real aside issue. from the countless 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 amounts are, are are instances of unarmed black men being be, be, you know being, being shot being shot and being killed. killed by police to different things that are you know this, this instance this instant here where fortunately thank god no one was killed but it's still such a serious issue because now it's it's it, it's trickled down to the kids like let's be real i can only imagine that now there are so many kids who will probably not want to go into areas that are predominantly white exactly. or, or will not want to go to parties that consist of of Caucasian people because there may be someone there who feels uncomfortable with them being there and think that they may start chaos. It feels like America is taking like 10 steps back. Like I thought we were progressing but at but one history, point. But history always repeats, repeats itself. itself. Always. Yeah, and it feels like we're, just, we're moving backwards. Like, and I feel like it should be progressing. But it's like all these instances keep occurring and keep occurring, and it's like I don't I don't know where I don't know where the problem is. It's if it's the training and the officers, I don't know what it is. But it's, something has got to give. Like I don't know, they figure something out because at this point, it's like people are dying, and the justice system isn't 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 doing isn't any justice anything. at all. Like as obviously, and hopefully in the future things get better. But right now, I feel like this racial tension is at an all time high. I do think that that it needs to be a high at this type of high so that way people can really open their eyes and see what is out there but it's just so sad that people just really even after after this pool party incident and all the all the killings and police brutality and all that people still aren't getting it and also another, another thing that really frustrates me is okay so people use you know the term you know you're innocent until proven guilty mm -hmm. and it's just so interesting to see who that is applied to exactly. in certain situations. Clearly, that that rule applies to the authorities. So whether it's the police officers, well, the police officers in these cases, the police officers yeah. are innocent until proven guilty. You know, they allegedly did something or, you know, they're unable to engage or even whenever there's like 
foolproof like it'll yes. be always allegedly or like you know he say she said it's never straightforward yeah. it's not proven yet da, 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 da. it's and they get the right to be innocent to proven guilty so you know like, so you know we can't judge them we can't say that they did it until a judge says that they did it but yet you have all these african-american men and women and things like that who are just instantly just mm -hmm. you can see them a hundred miles away and think that they might have done something yeah and they did it, it there's no there there are they are it's immediately a negative consequence they're, 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 yeah. they're this that and the third and it's instantly actually you know what that ties perfectly into media bias now i looked up what media bias is on wikipedia and for those of you guys don't know, media bias is the bias or perceived bias of journalists and news producers within the mass media and the selection of events and stories that are reported and how they are covered. Now, so we already said that there are people that don't believe that racism exists. Yeah. There are also, are also people who don't believe that media bias exists. Mm -hmm. And if you do, if you're one of those people who do believe or who don't believe that exist, you are a fool. I'm sorry. Like you, you, you must not be watching any TV, any social media, any news coverage, any it's, anything. It's, it's just crazy how it plays out. Give me a squad check scene in. Like it's so crazy how I guess this, it really bothers me because it's like as soon as like it's a cop or just anybody that's has some sort of authority or if you're a part of the predominant white race it's like it's instantly like you you're kind of said you're always innocent until you're proven guilty so until you get that guilty charge you are completely innocent but let it be an african-american person or african-american or just anybody that's you know um a minority it's all oh, it, i find that something is just complete opposite like it's never it it's you're never innocent like they you always know, bring out they always bring out your background they go, they go through back no they go through background checks they say oh he oh he smoked this drug oh he got sent to jail for this oh he had we, this we, we, with the we, law we found this we, we found out the person's entire life story like pretty yes. much his entire life even story. the pictures I mean, if, if, even if you notice even the pictures that they show are always are always for example in an african-american who's accused of a crime versus a caucasian person who's accused of a crime an, an african-american person they will go through all the archives to find the most sluggish looking picture yes. they can find of this individual yes for caucasian people sometimes they'll, sometimes they'll find graduation work pictures, photos work pictures anything like that nothing work. nothing that looks like too bad like nothing that looks yeah. too hard to going too scary things like that because because can't do it. you know it'll be do rags it'll but it'll pictures like people see like signs, forever it'll be anything also whenever it comes to analyzing the individuals themselves so you have african americans they're thugs they're gangsters they're criminals they're blah blah blah, blah. They, yeah. start, they started a riot, all these things. If it's a Caucasian person, for example, um, that one guy who shot up the theater in Colorado, you know, he was unstable and yeah. he had, you know, um, a he was a good kid. He was a good kid. He was a good kid. Yeah. A bit unstable, but he was a good kid. And it's just, it's just mind boggling just to see like how even the media portrays certain individuals based off of their race and the color of their skin and it's just again y'all it's just so 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 frustrating originally everybody thought that the whole problem was you no know, white white against black. black blah blah okay well first that's not that's never been the it's issue not, the issue isn't that it's the issue is targeting african americans just in general right so when everybody had found out about that there were six cops and like, i think a, a few of them were actually african americans people are like is still a, is this still a, 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 a race card issue is this still you know a white right. on black issue no this that's never been the issue the issue it's a is right versus wrong a human, yes. it's a hu human kind it's, it's like, a human rights issue can we yes. define what is right and what is wrong and like I just feel like a human being with a heart should be able to watch the news and look at these incidents and feel bad and understand where it comes from and seeing that this is wrong. Let's just say I'm walking down the street and I saw a, ca a Caucasian individual getting drunk on the floor because they jumped over a fence at a pool party. Would I step in? Yes, because that's just right versus wrong. Like I, I cannot let myself 
see injustice happen, not say not, agree, not think about agree. it. Like that's agree. just how I am. Right. Like, it it bothers me so much, you guys. Another recent example is the Waco biker gang situation. Oh yes. Now, yes, that to me was and the icing on the cake. On the, cake. the icing, the icing yes. of the, on the cake of clearly what's of clearly that something is going wrong. So I mean, if if you guys don't know, so in Waco at a Twin Peaks at a Twin Peaks in Waco, Texas, About there was ago, yeah. it's a few weeks ago there was um, a huge biker gang shootout. Nine people were killed. Nine, nine people were killed. Um, and there two are gangs. Gangs. There's, there's, it, 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 it was two Legit biker gangs. gangs, two legitimate biker gangs. Yes. So these two got into it in Twin Peaks, and they you know started shooting. It was like a legitimate like bloodbath. Now. According to the media, it was a brawl, you know, um, if you look at the pictures, the people are, are just, just chilling. They are just like, chilling oh my, these on their biker phones. The cops, people, the cops are like, the cops are away. 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 They're trying to investigate. Like, no, they are just kicking There's it. no SWAT teams in sight. There's no tear gas in sight. There's no riot gear in sight. Mm -hmm. These bikers who, and great news, the same bikers who just caused a bloodbath and killed nine people are just sitting there just, just chilling. chilling and it's just like chilling it's and then you have peaceful protesters in baltimore who are getting tear gassed and and, and you know beat down and it's just my bodily is not right like I, I i i'm just like i personally do not get how people still do not see the problem really like come on that makes no sense at all and I, Oh, y'all, I, I, it bothered me so bad. I've seen it on Facebook and on social media. I see people continue and continue to justify their actions. It's like, I wish I could just talk and just sit down and just talk to you and tell you why you were wrong. Like, I just wish I could just sit down and tell you this right. is why you were wrong. I want you to open your eyes and see what is actually going on in your community. Because it's happening right for your eyes, right? It's happening right before you. You still are completely right. blind to everything that's going on. So... We just want to come to you guys today again and just kind of bring you guys that little spill. Sorry if it's a long video, but we really just feel like this video really, really needs to be made because yeah. Alicia and I are just really, really passionate about it. You know, we're not honestly, you know, we're not claiming to be, you know, huge social activists. Yeah. We're not huge into politics and things like that. But whenever it comes to an issue that just tugs at the heart, we just have to speak on it. It's something different, I think, for YouTube in general because, you know, Alicia and I were talking about earlier how we don't see very many YouTubers, YouTubers actually talk about strong, heavy issues. Yeah. It's kind of sad because I feel like, you know, we have this platform and we should be using it to talk about spread things like the this word. and yeah. spread the word. And like Kyra said, these, these are our points of like our, our opinions. Like they are, you know, not everybody's opinions, but the right. whole point of this whole video. We don't represent the whole African American race. Yeah, because we, we all don't. Different. we all have our own different opinions, but at the end of the day, we just really want you to just, you know, spread the word. I think if we just want to leave at least one word of advice to you guys, is just to be aware and just open your eyes to what is actually going on in this country and around the world. It, it would be marvelous if we lived in a world one day where everyone truly loved each, each other, other and treated each other with respect yeah. and love and dignity. And it, it, it's just sad to not see that going on, but hopefully one day, you know, we can get there. Hopefully you guys, you know, enjoyed it. Well, not really enjoyed it, but hope you guys kind of see like where we're coming from and, you know, it's take something, something from, from, it, yeah. from, from this video. So that's it for this video, you guys. We will see you in the next one. Love Bye. you guys. Love you. Bye.